out to this talk. Uh, and in this talk, I'll be discussing building Docker images for ARM architectures, essentially using Circle CI pipelines to build uh, native ARM Docker images. Before we proceed, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Angel Rivera. I'm a developer advocate for Circle CI. And if anyone wants to reach out to me uh, post uh, talk, uh, you can reach out to me using my Twitter handle, which is at punkdata. And I'm open to you know any questions or conversations uh, anyone wants to have around this topic and others. Um, but let's jump into what we came here to talk about, which is ARM architectures. Now, ARM architectures are essentially uh, processors, right, uh, that uh, operate differently than uh, the x86 uh, processors. Uh, ARM processors have been around for quite some time, uh, so they're really not anything new, uh, but they are gaining popularity. Um, and like I said, they've been around for quite some time. Uh, Here's a list of some of the types of uh, devices that are powered by ARM processors and platforms, uh, smartphones, tablets, Raspberry Pis, and uh, certain IoT smart devices, such as TVs, appliances, and wearables. So ARM you know, has been in existence again for, for quite some time, uh, and especially in these types of devices, right? But if you notice, a lot of these devices are generally powered by batteries. And the reason that ARM is kind of the processor of choice when it comes to battery operated or, or mobile devices is because ARM has the ability to compute data using very low power consumption. So it uses minimal power to accomplish its processing tasks. Now, ARM has been supported uh, by a bunch of operating systems. Um, Linux in particular, Windows as well, and more recently, uh, Mac OS. So the idea with Apple adopting the ARM architecture uh, for all of their devices in, in, in current and future releases is for them to essentially streamline right on, on a standard uh, processing platform or processor, and also to uh, enable uh, a better power consumption right across all of their all of their devices, including you know desktops and uh, laptops so with the adoption of apple or arm uh, with the adoption of, of arm by apple uh you know the the processor is gaining more popularity as well within like the uh, server space so again it's it's low power consumption capabilities are making it uh, more of a candidate uh, to be the, the processor of choice when powering uh, servers. So uh, not only are, is ARM uh, you know, dominant in the, the mobile space uh, and the smart uh, device space, it's also now uh, entering uh, you know, and competing in uh, the server space, which is generally uh, dominated by the x86 architectures that we're so used to. So one of the biggest problems though with ARM and uh, x86 the processors they're just not compatible and the reason for this is because of the instruction sets so these are the essentially the interpreters for the processors um, so applications that are compiled for uh, x86 will not function on arm processors uh, properly and and the arm applications that are compiled uh, for ARM will not op function or operate on an x86 processor. So that leads us to kind of a, a situation where, you know, developers who want to compile their applications uh, for uh, ARM devices uh, have to kind of jump through hoops to do that currently. Um, and vice versa, right, for ARM as well, if they want to compile for x86, it's just the whole process, right, That that's kind of separate. Um, but I'm here to say that uh, Circle CI has recognized now that you know uh, the ARM landscape is growing, uh, and developers want to build CI/CD pipelines that can handle building applications for the x86 platforms as well as the ARM uh, devices and processors. So Circle CI has uh, basically engineered, uh, natively engineered, uh, the ability to execute 
uh, your application code or your build processes on ARM, native ARM uh, executors or compute nodes, which is essentially how you have to build your ARM processors, unless you are building your ARM uh, based applications, unless you're using uh, some sort of emulator, right? In order to emulate the ARM architecture, and then you can build on an x86 platform, which, um, you know, it, it serves a purpose in the cases for most of, of, of the situations, but it's still not an ideal, you know, uh, 100% native one-to-one. -one. Emulation is great, but it does have its limitations as well. So, as I spoke earlier, or I, I said, yeah, spoke earlier, uh, the ARM applications uh, are are not, you know, incompatible between the two platforms. Um, so of course, right, code is is generic. It doesn't really care uh, about where it's going to run. Uh, but in this case, if you're if you're compiling your code into a binary, it does matter, right? And it has to be compiled on uh, ARM hardware in order to basically be deployed to a uh, ARM capable device. Now, this also applies to Docker images, right? Because of the nature of Docker, the, it, it's basically sharing a kernel um, in order for you to build a Docker compatible or ARM compatible Docker images, you must have an underlying uh, hardware, right? An underlying kernel for uh, the software to use in order to uh, understand the instruction set and, and then build an ARM compatible image. So in, in this case, you know, with your CI/CD pipelines, prior to CircleCI adopting and implementing an ARM, a native ARM executor or compute node to run your code on, uh, you know, this was done in many multiple ways, but now it's so much easier. Uh, we enable the developers to actually uh, just, you know, add ARM capable compute nodes or resource classes to their pipelines. And then they're off and running, you know, building their applications and solutions uh, specifically for ARM processors. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate how you can easily uh, implement ARM resource classes within your CI/CD pipelines and also show you how you can easily build uh, ARM compatible Docker images. So the first thing you want to do is look at the code. Uh, I have a project here that is essentially a simple node JS application. Um, and this application serves up a, a simple web page. Uh, the application truly isn't that important for this demo. Uh, so we're not going to focus a bunch on that. But I do want to point out that, um, you know, one of the things that must be done in order for you to build Docker images that are ARM compatible, you have to uh, essentially inherit from an ARM compatible uh, image, right? So we're basing the image uh, that I'm going to build off of a node 14, a version 14 image, but it's essentially um, of the ARM architecture flavor. So within your Docker file, if you're going to build ARM, anything ARM, right? Any, any re ARM related Docker images, uh, you definitely want to, uh, you know, start with uh, the ARM uh, 64 version eight layer, and then, um, you know, implement uh, or then implement the technology. In this case, it's Node.js, so we're gonna use a Node 14, version 14 uh, image. Again, this is really important uh, because if you use the, uh, you know, x86 uh, version, then uh, it will not work once you deploy it. So uh, in my demonstration, um, let's talk about uh, the config file uh, for this demo. Uh, this basically is the pipeline. Uh, the the uh, yeah the pipeline execution or definition uh, for the 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 pipeline to be executed. Um, this is essentially the file that declares your CI/CD pipelines on Circle CI. Um, as you can see here, we have a few things um, that I'll cover in a minute. But uh, we have a an orbs declaration, meaning uh, you know Circle CI has uh, kind of extended capabilities that are essentially uh, uh, configuration uh, for the pipeline that lives. Uh, in what we call an orb registry, similar to the Docker Hub registry, but it's basically uh, packaged up functionality for your CI/CD pipeline. And you'll see a couple of cases where it's used. 
Um, in this case, uh, let's go ahead and look at the build Docker image since that's kind of the focus of it. Um, I have a couple jobs, right, like run tests, but I'm going to focus in on the build Docker image image job to show you, you know, the power of, of CircleCI's uh, ARM capabilities. Um, the first thing you're going to do is define the machine class, right? So you're going to basically tell the system I want to use a, a virtual machine to build my Docker images on. Uh, and then the next key that you have to uh, basically address is the resource class, which is the type of compute underlying compute node you want to use. Uh, currently, CircleCI only supports um, the machine resource class. And and the way that you uh, define that you want an ARM, uh, you know, virtual machine or resource class is you just essentially uh, define ARM.medium as a value for the resource class. And that will give you a medium-sized uh, compute node to then execute your code on for ARM. Now, remember, uh, in order for you to create ARM-compatible, uh, you know, Docker images, you must build and compile using ARM hardware. So the first thing we want to do in this case is, you know, pull a checkout uh, of our code from uh, the GitHub uh, repository in this case. Um, then we're going to use our, our node, uh, our disregard our uh, orbs uh, uh, capability. So I defined a, a Docker orb up top. I'm using the Docker orb uh, capabilities and then I have this uh, this uh, function or command called build and essentially what it's doing is it's going to build me a docker image uh, based off of you know the the docker uh, the docker file that I have in my project so uh, there's a few things you have to assign it right now I'm just using environment variables based off of my login for docker hub and then uh, the project repo name environment variable. So, you know, kind of keeps everything uh, static and, and uh, nice and clean and um, generic. I'm also going to uh, leverage the push command here from our Docker orb, which will essentially push the built image up to Docker Hub for me. So once I have all of that accomplished, I'm going to go ahead and then deploy that ARM capable image to a Amazon ECS uh, cluster that is basically powered by ARM compute nodes underneath. So this whole pipeline is an, an example of how you can you know, uh, build ARM uh, compatible applications and Docker images, package them up, and then push them to a Docker repository, and then using infrastructure as code, create an AWS ECS cluster so that we can then uh, deploy that to the cluster that the ECS cluster, which is powered by uh, AWS's ARM Graviton 2 compute nodes. So there's a lot going on, but let's jump into the demo and get things going and moving. First thing we want to do is go ahead and uh, change a value in our app, right? So we want to make a change so that we can kick off our pipeline in the CircleCI dashboard. Uh, what I'm going to do here is change the application to version four. Uh, then I'm going to save it. Uh, then we're going to jump over to my terminal so that we can go ahead and do a, uh, a check on the status, right? Make sure that we have some changes to commit. We do. So I'm going to do a get status and then app.js. Uh, then I'm going to tell it, you know, a message like, uh, updated version number and then from there I'm just gonna um, oh not status but we're gonna do a git commit let me just change that and then we're, we've committed the change and now I just want to do a git push upstream right so this is pushing uh, these changes to my repo which is being monitored by circle CI so let's go ahead and look for a different uh, browser. There you go. Uh, so we should see a change here very shortly. And essentially what we're seeing here is uh, the pipeline has been triggered. It's starting to execute all of the jobs that were defined in our uh, CircleCI configuration.yaml file. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the jobs that are actually uh, you know, being executed uh, in our in our uh, pipeline. So the first thing I wanted to show you was the fact that uh, the Docker build itself, uh, the Docker image build is occurring uh, on an ARM 
uh, Linux medium executor, right? So again, um, the underlying compute node that is built and pushed our Docker images to Docker Hub is functioning on a uh, Circle CI ARM resource class. As you can see, it was pretty quick, right? Like our build uh, actually built the Docker image already and has uh, pushed it up to Docker Hub, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can see here, um, this is the orb, uh, basically the orb uh, uh, commands that we used. As you can see, we did a Docker build, right? And we're basing that off of the uh, ARM uh, version 64 or uh, ARM 64 version eight uh, image, right? So that again, remember we have to build on ARM in order to deploy to ARM. Um, so once we have that, that uh, Docker image you know, built, it should exist in uh, my Docker hub account because that's where I pushed the image. If I do a refresh, we should see our new image uh, showing up here very shortly. Uh, I believe, yeah, a minute ago. So this is the new image that we built, right? And we pushed uh, from, from my uh, CICD pipeline. So it's version 1.59. Um, and in this case, we also have some other jobs, right? So now that we have the image, it's pushed to Docker Hub. Um, our, our pipeline will now create a new AWS um, ECS cluster based off of ARM architectures, which, which is using the AWS uh, Graviton2 uh, compute nodes. That's going to take a moment. I'm using Terraform to actually build out a bunch of infrastructure. So yeah, it's going to take a little time. But once that's done, we should have a fully functional uh, application that's ARM compatible based off of a task definition that has been deployed to uh, East, uh, Amazon's Elastic uh, cluster, Container Service. So our ECS deployment uh, from Terraform has been completed. Um, right now we have, we should have a functioning uh, Terraform or a, a functioning Amazon ECS cluster in Amazon. Um, and there should be a deployment of, an, of this application in a ARM capable Docker container. Since the ECS cluster is being powered by AWS Graviton2 ARM compute nodes. So let's take a look at our pipeline and what that looks like and where it's at. Uh, currently, I do have a manual step, which is what we call a manual step job in there. Uh, and this is essentially a, a, I use it to stop for demos. Uh, uh, you know, and all it does is gonna destroy all the things that I built. But I do wanna see if our application uh, is functioning on our newly uh, deployed ECS cluster. Now, just because the job is finished doesn't necessarily mean AWS is actually finished with you know, constituting and provisioning all of our, our resources. Uh, so go, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, Elastic Container Service. Um, right now, uh, as you can see, the cluster was created. Um, so if we dig drill in a little bit deeper, um, we do have a service that was created. So that means that our uh, Elastic load balancer, our application load balancer is, is up and running. So if we click into that, we're going to see that, you know, we do have um, this, the, I'm sorry, the, the service is actually the, um, the uh, Elastic container service, which has been uh, deployed. Um, and we're using this task definition. So if you drill into that, uh, and we look at the JSON, it's essentially this defining, you know, what, type of image to deploy, uh, how to deploy it, like configuration settings, right? Uh, in this case, we're gonna look for the, uh, the, the image that we're using, um, you know, to deploy to this. And here it is right here. Uh, this image right here is the 159 image that we saw earlier in uh, my Docker hub, right, 159. So those are matching. So uh, if we go back to the cluster, we can actually see a little bit more detail on what's happening. Um, we do have a task that has, you know, basically it's actually being deployed right now. So as you can see, uh, ECS is deploying that new image uh, to the to the new cluster. It's just taking a little bit longer because of course we've provisioned everything from scratch. Um, and let's take a look at the EC2 instances. So this is, um, you know, what is actually powering the cluster. These things here, I have two instances. 
Um, and if we drill into the instance here, we'll be able to see what type of compute node we're actually running. Now with Amazon's Graviton2, um, if you look at the instance type, this TG4 or T4G.medium is the actual type of compute node we're using to power our cluster. In this case, it's a, it's a, it's a Graviton2 uh, 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 instance. Um, and the reason why I know that is this G right here. So if you see anything in Amazon, as far as instance type, instance types go, uh, anything that is uh, ending, you know, the, in, in G uh, is used to signify that it's a Graviton2 instance. So just, you know, if you, you are planning on using Graviton instances, remember that G is a quick, just seeing that G uh, at the end of the, uh, the, the prefix, for the instance type is an, a good indicator that you're using a Graviton2 instance. So let's go back to our cluster because I'm really interested in seeing if our application has been deployed. So the one thing we could do actually is go back to uh, Circle CI and we can get from our deploy uh, uh, job there, uh, we can actually get the load balancer and host name. So let's go ahead and grab that. And I'm going to go ahead and open up a new browser. Hopefully our application is running and it is right. So this is um, version four of our application. It's running in this Amazon ECS cluster. Um, and, you know, you can see a lot of different things here as well. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're, you know, deploying uh, this ARM compatible Docker image with our ARM compatible application to an ECS cluster powered by ARM compute nodes, which is pretty awesome. Um, this capability did not exist a few years ago, and uh, it's super cool to see that, you know, all of this uh, does exist now and gives uh, the developers uh, better options on how to deploy their applications to multiple platforms. Uh, now, I did show you uh, pretty much, you know, the ARM cluster or the uh, ECS cluster working with ARM compute nodes um, and then the service tasks here, right? Are, are essentially what is being deployed uh, to the platform. So these are the, the uh, actively running instances of the application. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was um, I am using uh, infrastructure's code. I'm using Terraform in this case to you know, orchestrate all of my provisioning of infrastructure from my CICD pipeline. Um, this pipeline is great. Uh, it's a great example for how you can you know, leverage uh, infrastructure as code to build out uh, infrastructure and then deploy those those uh, artifacts that you're building to those infrastructures and you can even test them right so to ensure that yeah the application artifact is built for a specific platform like arm and it works in the CI/CD pipeline which is completely arm and it also works uh, when deployed to ARM infrastructure, like again, in this case, uh, Amazon Graviton2 uh, ARM instances. So the next thing I wanna do here is just click the destroy button. Um, and the reason why I wanna destroy this infrastructure is because I really won't need it anymore, right? For the demonstration purposes. And it's just, uh, you know, pretty much nonsense to leave uh, this infrastructure up and running. So I'm gonna click approve. Once I do that, um, the next thing it's going to do is kick off my destroy uh, AWS ECS job, uh, which essentially will uh, tear down all of that infrastructure in Amazon that we created. As you can see, we are inside of our destroy job for our ECS cluster. And uh, Terraform has basically kick, kicked off my destroy commands uh, and it's running them. So... Again, we'll shortly have um, a situation where the infrastructure that I created in my CICD pipeline uh, on Amazon will be destroyed and will no longer exist. As the destroy command is executing, uh, you can see we still have our, our ECS cluster available. Um, still running task with some container instances. Uh, but this will shortly all be uh, destroyed. Um, I'm sure the application is longer running. If I drill into it a little bit, see uh, the service is gone. 
Um, we can check our instances as, as usual, right? Uh, this takes quite a bit of time to start terminating uh, because, you know, there's a lot of moving parts, especially on the Amazon uh, infrastructure. So we'll go ahead and again, wait for, for that to all terminate. Our Terraform destroy command is finally completed and are essentially destroyed all of the uh, Amazon infrastructure we built earlier uh, using that same code. Uh, so if we go ahead and refresh here, we should not have any clusters. Yeah, the, the ARM cluster went away. So all of those resources have been destroyed uh, and the pipeline has successfully been uh, executed, which means uh, we should have a successful build here. Um, again, you know, this exercise or this demo was designed to show you how you can build uh, ARM compatible applications uh, from your CI CD platform, which is Circle CI, uh, and deploy uh, those ARM capable artifacts, such as the Docker container that we built, uh, to ARM powered uh, resources, such as the uh, Graviton 2 powered uh, ECS cluster that we created in our CI CD pipeline for testing purposes. And again, you know, we have the Docker image living in, in, uh, in the Docker Hub uh, repository and it's ready to go. So uh, that's basically it for this demonstration. Uh, I definitely wanna thank you for um, showing up and um, you know listening to this talk. And if you have any questions, please visit us at our booth or just uh, hit me up at Punk Data on Twitter and I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you.